Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Melatone Amps. Now, we're just about to start really seriously soldering this sucker together. But before we do that, let's do a circuit overview quickly so that you can understand a little bit about how everything you're about to put on the circuit board works. Okay, now this is easy. You see your B+, plus? that's old-fashioned for B plus battery. <laughs> but what this is actually is your power supply um, high voltage feed. So I think everybody got that. And over here, here's the signal arriving. It arrives on, on an, in an RCA jack and it, it essentially comes through this, this really cool micro switch. So we, we have two um, two options coming in and uh, we switch between them here. We're only showing one channel. That's why you only see two RCAs instead of the four, yeah? And um, we land on the ALPS pot. This is a 100K um, dual section uh, pot. So it's a stereo pot and the 100K pot actually sets the input impedance. Now, it will vary slightly depending on the position of the volume, but essentially you will end up with, uh, with 100K basically as a nominal input impedance. I think the lowest it goes is something like 96, but... Yeah, it really doesn't make much of a difference. Yeah. And um, we, we, we enter the, the grid of the gain stage, the 6N1P, or whatever tube you're rolling in, there's actually quite a few tubes you can roll in the gain stage, through a, a, a grid stopper resistor, this little quarter watt 220R. What that does is it, it, it basically prevents or helps mitigate this wire here that's coming in from becoming an antenna. That's why they call it a grid stopper. The grid is extremely sensitive to signals, of course, because that's where the signal normally lands onto the tube. This is a very standard gain stage. So the cathode of the tube is biasing it up, so it's a cathode bias tube. Sometimes called an auto bias. Yeah. And R5 down here, 360R1 watt. That sets the operating point of this tube in conjunction with the voltage that's supplied here. And of course, the actual impedance of the tube and its design all affects its operating point. Um, but all of these tubes are in the same, uh, what, broad family of tubes, Charles? Well, there's a few that are a bit different, but they all bias up into a nice linear area and uh, they all work quite well. And that's really what matters, right? Yep. As long as you're in a linear zone, and you sound good, Bob's your uncle. We're happy. Down here we have something really interesting. This is your bypass switch. And um, basically what you were doing when we, we put C4 in circuit, that's this 470 microfarad 50 volt, is that we're allowing the, um, the AC portion of the signal that is swinging in this tube to bypass the cathode resistor, it creates a more efficient gain stage as a result, and the volume difference is significant. Yep. Now this 15K quarter watt resistor is essentially a pop stopper. Yeah. So it is, it's in itself is bypassing the switch with 15,000 ohms of resistance. So what it does is it just sneaks a little tiny bit of voltage across here to keep a charge on this cap so that when you engage it, particularly when you've just turned on the amp, that you don't accidentally have a nice little pop, which yeah. can be really annoying. Yeah, I mean, it's not that loud whenever it does happen, and it can happen right after you've turned on the amp. You have to give it a minute or so to charge up, but it is to, you know, not disturb things whenever you flip it over. Yeah. And the sonics of the amp will change depending on whether you bypass or don't bypass. And that's a real thing. Uh, designers, uh, aficionados, audiophiles have spent decades discussing whether this is a thing, whether they like it bypassed, whether they like it just simply cathode biased. 
Um, and um, and you get to see for yourself. And uh, it gives you two options with every tube that you're using, and uh, also the bypass version gives you more gain. Yeah, and uh, when we're all done building, we're actually going to do a segment that's the building manual, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. This is the plate resistor, 10K, uh, 2 watt, and this is what creates the swing. And when the signal arrives, it's anomaly in the positive phase. We take the gain signal off of the plate and the, the signal inverts. So now we're nominally on the negative phase. We couple through a capacitor so that high voltage DC that's present here so doesn't that, make it across that ca capacitor and doesn't end up on the grid and destroying your, your next stage. <laughs> yep. Down here we have a 470K and that is just a little tiny um, it's a grid reference. So it's referencing the grid to here as if it's the ground point. Yeah. And if there is any stray electrons floating around the grid that shouldn't be there, that are DC, not AC, the signal is AC, this will bleed them off to ground eventually and keep the bias of the tube stable, which is, of course, very important. And here we're, um, we've got a an inverted stage basically. So this is called a cathode follower and what that does is not give us any gain. In fact gain is nominally unity. Unity means one go one volt goes in, one volt comes out. Um, but it ends up being something called unity minus one. So you get slightly less gain out of it. Yep. But it pushes lots of current out at a very low impedance. And that's what a cathode follower stage is. It's a low impedance follower stage or driving stage for what comes next. And that means we can put long cables on this thing without getting into trouble. So we've got two resistors down here. This one here, R7, is essentially the same as R5. It's biasing up the tube. And down here we have a 5K6, 5 watt. And the fact that it's a big powerful resistor should give you a clue that, in fact, that's the plate resistor inverted, and it's way down here. So we get a very, we get the same amount of voltage that we got off the gain stage, basically, here, but we get very low impedance. Over here, we have gain with high impedance. We couple the gain, and notice our signal has not inverted because we came off the follower. This is just a, a little tiny, um, leak off of the signal to make sure that if there's any stray DC present that it will bleed off at 220,000 ohms, 220k. It's a very high value so the amount of signal loss is going to be very small and then Bob's your uncle, we are out. It also acts as a load resistor here as well for the cathode follower stage so if nothing is plugged in here the stage is correctly loaded down. Right. Yeah, excellent. Okay, well, I think it's time to start building.